Okay, everyone. Happy Thursday. So yes, we are going to do a live today with a special guest, Marshawn. Um, and I'm just waiting um, for our guests to join us and then we can go ahead and get started. Um, yeah. Just wait a few moments and then I'm excited for today's topic because I think it's important for us to talk about this, um, especially because Halloween is coming up and a lot of problematic costumes are worn during this holiday. gonna wait a few moments and we'll get started soon Hello. Hi, Eva Kuhn. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Nice to have you on here today. Yes. Nice to have to be on here with you today. <laughs> Excited. Okay. Are you all set? Ready to start? Yes, I am. Sounds good. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Ibu Kuhn, um, and I use she, her pronouns. And Marshawn, you can introduce yourself. Hi everyone. My name is Marshawn, the Whitman Walker Health Live OG, and my pronouns are he and she. Awesome. So today we're actually talking about something really important. We're talking about cultural appropriation and how it relates to a holiday like Halloween. And we're also going to discuss very briefly about just how to celebrate Halloween safely. Um, but before we get into that, I just have to say that um, the Women Walker Health Community Health Department has been expanding its outreach efforts to the social media platforms. So I'm sure you've seen us do talk about various topics from HIV, STI, sexual health practices to access to care. We talked about social determinants of health last week. Um, and just general public health interventions. So over time, you're going to see us talk about various issues. And like I said, today, we're going to be talking about cultural appropriation. So Halloween is coming up. And with that comes all the great costumes, as well as the not so great costumes. Um, so today, I just want us to discuss how to celebrate Halloween in a way that respects people's cultures and identities. And of course, we're going to discuss how to remain COVID safe during this holiday. Yes, I think it's really important that we're providing this space for everyone just to talk about this. Yeah, so I think bef before we can even start this conversation, we need to talk about what is cultural appropriation and what does it mean in this context? So Marshawn, can you just explain to us what cultural appropriation means? Yes, cultural appropriation happens when you take something from a different culture and you try to use it in an un unintended way or, or for a financial gain. Yeah, so with that, like, for example, if I decided to go wear, like, a Native American cultural costume, even though I do not identify as a Native American, would that be considered cultural appropriation? It would be. Um, and it can, it can come off as very rude and ignorant to give the historical meaning and significance, you know, of clothing in that way. Okay. Yeah, so thank you for explaining that. So what are some things people should consider when um, choosing a costume? What do you think? Um, I think it's important to consider the colonial and oppressive history that may be associated with certain costumes. Um, you may not realize it just simply because, you know, Halloween is a, a day where we dress up, but it's important to think about those things. Yeah, exactly. And I also think it's important to recognize, like, the lived oppression and injustice that have occurred with the certain groups that are associating with the costume. So, like, Whenever you're choosing a costume, it's not just you getting the opportunity 
to wear this costume for one night. It's like thinking about what are what experiences do the people who literally live in these costumes, what are they experiencing? So just also keep that in mind when choosing a costume. Right. It's very important to do your research when picking yeah. out a Halloween costume. <clears throat> exactly. Like doing your research, um, learn all that you can about the costume and make sure it's not going to come off offensive. Um, I think it would be helpful for our audience if we discussed a few questions that can help guide a person when they're choosing an outfit. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think um, maybe like what comes to mind to me would just be, am I a part of this community? Do I identify with this community? Um, what is my position of power in this situation? Am I a part of this group? Yeah. Um, things like that. Exactly. I agree. Um, I guess a question I would also ask is, um, does this costume perpetuate any other stereotypes, um, particularly like racial stereotypes or um, if something could talk about like gender or something. So like really just asking yourself, wearing this costume, am I pushing forward these negative stereotypes? Um, so just make sure that you're centering um, a positive image of a group of individuals versus like wearing costumes that are like derogatory. Right, I like how you said a positive image because it may not, you might not necessarily see it that way, of course, going into the Halloween store, but you just really have to think about it and do your research. Yeah. Um, another thing is making sure your costume, you know, doesn't have any race-related hair accessories or hairstyles such as maybe locks, afros, cornrows, corn hijabs, or headdresses. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Um, and I think a good final question is, and I know this can be a pretty difficult question to answer, but I would say, like, is this something I would choose to wear on a on the average day? So, like, basically what this question is pointing at is, are there any negative um, aspects of the way of life this costume represents that I would not want to live with every day? So we know Halloween. We understand the concept is to dress up as something you're not. But if you are perpetuating a negative stereotype, you have to really think about it. Like, would I want this for myself, you know? And then... I think if you're able to say, no, I don't want it for myself, then you can understand why you should do the work to like dismantle the stereotypes that these people have that they're not even asking for. It's like almost like if you wouldn't ask for those stereotypes, you shouldn't wear them. And you should also do the work to help out the people who are being negatively affected by the stereotypes. Right. I think that is very helpful, um, which is why we're here to help you choose respectful, um, non-cultural appropriate costumes. Yeah. So basically what we're saying is there should be no Native American costumes, no Sinorita costumes, no Gypsy costumes, no Dashiki costumes, um, nothing related to blackface um, or no costumes that are going to um, assume a person's disability. Um, I mean, there's just so many different ways to do a costume wrong. I really hope like this discussion has kind of helped you at least start thinking about is my costume appropriate or not? Right, exactly. Um, let's always be mindful of our costumes this year and onward. I think that we should also talk about how to celebrate Halloween safely as well. Ibuku, what you think? Yeah, I agree. Um, so we urge everyone to continue to follow, you know, the safety guidelines put in place. So like quarantine, social distance, wear your mask, wash your hands. I mean, get the vaccine if you can. Um, but I guess another thing we would suggest is just if you do want to celebrate, maybe celebrate in smaller groups and smaller groups of people that you already kind of interact with already. So like maybe you want to do a small party with your roommates. These are people you're already living with regardless, right? Um, and even when you are meeting with them and having this small group um, encounter, you could also just continue wearing your mask and just, just continue practicing the same safety guidelines. Do you have any other suggestions of ways people can celebrate Halloween safely? Um, yes, maybe virtual celebrations, maybe yeah. via Zoom, Skype, FaceTime. Um, also celebrating at home and limiting trick-or-treating just because you want to limit your contact with, you know, other individuals outside of your household. Yeah, I agree. And also, if you do choose to go outside and, like, you know, go out, just like we said, just continue wearing your mask and, just be mindful of 
you know, the people around you might not be vaccinated. So maybe um, after Halloween is over, this is a good time to get another COVID test just to make sure you haven't, you know, um, gotten COVID over this weekend. Um, but I think that's pretty much all we have to share today. Do you have anything else to say, Marshawn? Um, no, be sure to wear your face mask, physical distancing of six feet, as you mentioned. Um, and if you, anyone has any questions or um, if they want to, you know, access if we believe that their costume is inappropriate, feel free to DM us, write us on any social media account. Um, and yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that, Marsha. Yeah, we'll definitely give you our input about if we think it's appropriating a culture or not. Um, right. I just want to say thank you again, Marshawn your day to join us today i really appreciate it um thank you. if you guys ever needed to get a covid vaccine you can call us at 202-207-2480 um we're available to anyone in the dmv that would like to get a covid vaccine um but yeah thanks you guys for watching today and we'll see you sometime next week Oh, and just as another reminder, um, if you're interested in any HIV and STI testing or treatment, any known exposures, anything, um, you can contact us by appointment only at 202-797-4439. Yes, thank you. For some reason, I can't pin messages. Instagram is doing something new where you can't. Oh, no, you're fine. That's why, <laughs> that's why I'm here. We help each other. Yes, thank you. Right. You're welcome. Nice seeing you, Marshawn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Bye.